So let's go ahead and take a look at a uh, circuit which makes use of a semiconductor. Specifically, let's take a look at one that has an NPN transistor, right, a BJT. And in this particular problem, we're given beta of the transistor is 150. And we're given that V, B, E is 0.7 volts. And we want to find V naught. So V naught is this voltage, right? It's the collector emitter voltage, right? this drop. VBE is the base emitter voltage right through there. Right? One thing you can notice with this particular circuit is that the emitter is connected straight to ground. So to find V naught, this voltage cross here, is really to find that nodal voltage. Okay, well how do you find that nodal voltage? Well, we know that this node is at 16 volts. So if we can know this voltage drop, we would know what that voltage is. And we could figure out what this voltage drop is if we knew the current that's flowing through there. If you could figure out what IC is. The collector current. Okay. Well, we know that for most circuit analysis problems with, uh, with lots of unknowns, uh, what we want to do is we want to set up as many different relationships as we can between what we do know so, and with our unknowns to, to eventually solve for our unknowns. So let's take a look at some relationships we can take for granted with BJTs. So we know collector current equals alpha times, oops, that should say, emitter current. The collector current also equals beta times the beta current. And the emitter current equals 1 plus beta times the beta current. Oh, times the base current, sorry. Base current, not beta current. Okay, well this looks useful right there, doesn't it? Because we have beta and if we want to find IC, this seems to be an equation that could be useful. The only thing we don't have here is IB, the base current. Right? We don't have this current going through there. But can we get it? I don't think we can. So let's take a look. Let's call this current going into this node I1. Let's call this current coming out of that node I2. Well, now we have a relationship here between these three currents using Kirchhoff's current law. Okay, we know that I1 equals I2 plus IB. Okay, and now it's a matter of finding out what those currents are. Well, how might we set up some relationships here to figure out what these currents are? Well, if you notice, we have a couple loops that are kind of obvious to us the way the circuit is drawn. We have a loop here. We have a loop here. So maybe we can set up some equations using Kirchhoff's, uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law. So let's go ahead and use Kirchhoff's voltage law. And let's call that loop one. Let's call that loop two. And we can set up some relationships between our knowns and our unknowns there. So as we do Kirchhoff's voltage law, remember the idea is that the sum of all the voltages within a loop have to equal to zero. That's a L1, not a four there, right? <laughs> so this current, this I1, times this resistance, 100 kilo ohms, gives us this voltage drop. So I1 times 100k. That gives us this voltage drop. As we go along this way around the loop, we have another voltage drop here. That's, that's I2 now, times this resistance, which is 200 kilo ohm. And then as we go around the loop, there's a voltage drop here, but notice the polarity, right? Notice the polarity, so we have to minus two volts. Because the way we've, uh, we've notated the loop, it's going through minus to plus. 
So we're going to minus those two volts. So now you have this relationship. And we're going to say that all equals to zero. Okay, so let's hold on to that. That's one. That's L1. How about L2? Well, for this loop, here's the current going through here. Well, we've labeled I2 going down this way. So let's go ahead and say minus I2 200K as we continue this way. And then here's another voltage drop here. Well, that's just VBE. So plus VBE equals zero. Okay. Well, notice that we know VBE here. It's given to us as 0.7. So we can step through that here and solve for I2. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to move this stuff to that side. So VBE equals I2 times 200K kilo ohm. And then we could divide both sides by 200K. All right, so we're going to get that rid of there. 200K. So I2 equals VBE divided by 200K. I'm going to rewrite that, make it look neater. I2 equals VBE, which is 0.7, divided by 200K. Okay, and that's going to give us about 3.5 microamps. Okay, so make sure when you do this division your calculator, you um, you can count your zeros to make sure that the notation works out right. So that's microamps here. You can verify that for yourself. Well, we have I2 here, and over here we had this equation that had I1 and I2 in it. Well, now we have I2, so we can substitute that into there, and then we only have one unknown left. So I'm going to bring L1's loop equation back down here. So I1 times 100K plus 3.5 microamps times 200K minus 2 equals 0. So let's go ahead and move all of this stuff to that side. So we have I1 times 100K equals 2 minus 3.5 micro times 200K. Oops, you can't see that. There you go. Now you can see it. And then we divide both sides by 100K. So I1, if you do your math correctly, would give you about 13 microamps. Okay. So now we have I1, we have I2, and we know the relationship between I1, I2, and IB. So let's go ahead and use this KCL equation. Where should we put it? Let's go this way. Let's bring it over here. So I1, we just found out is three, uh, 13 microamps equals I2, which we solved to be 3.5 microamps plus I B. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve for IB. So we'll put IB on this side. IB equals 13 micro minus 3.5 micro. Hopefully you can follow that algebra there. Okay, so IB equals 9.5 microamps. Okay, so now that we know IB, we can solve for IC using this equation. So IC equals 9.5, ah, sorry. IC, right here using that equation, our beta is 150. And then our IB, we just solve for is 9.5 micro. And then we can solve for IC. So now we have oh, now we have IC, and we can use 
a simple Ohm's law equation here, right? We know that this current times this resistor equals this voltage drop. So let's go ahead and set up that equation. Um, let's put that in this little tiny corner right down here. All right? So 16 minus V naught. 16 minus V naught is that voltage drop. So that equals the current, 0 0.001425, times the resistance, which is 1K. All right, here's our 1K. So let's go ahead and isolate V naught on one side. So 16 minus 0 0.001425 times 1k equals v naught. Ah, it's a mess, but it's art. So 16 minus that value should give you 14.575 volts. And that is your answer. Well, I hope that helps a little bit. If you need to, feel free to watch this again. But I'll probably put, put up some more um, semiconductor type of circuit analysis problems uh, later on. The more practice, the better, I think, don't you? Okay, good luck. Hope that helped a tiny bit.